everybody. This is the Atlas ATV. I'd like to introduce you to Shane Lindsay. This is his. <laughs> right now. Okay, so um, I have some questions, Shane. Now, um, this is obviously uh, an ATV, like I said. You can take it anywhere. 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 This is what I call my apocalyptic uh, <laughs> escape vehicle. Can... So when the world ends, we're coming to you. Yes. That's what you're saying. Okay. That sounds good. So I, I'm curious, give me some details here. Now, these tires are massive. And now I have heels on, but they're pretty much almost my height right. without my heels. The tires are 65 inches tall. So 65 inches high. And here's the interesting thing about them. PSI wise, for instance, the automobile tire averages about 35 to 50 PSI. Okay. That's an automobile tire. So what would you imagine a tire this large PSI would be? Honestly, I, I wouldn't even know how to guess. Three PSI. What? Three. <laughs> three PSI? Three. We're going down. I yeah. thought we were going to go up. No, no. It's we're going three. down okay and that's what gives this its ability to travel in mud and swamp and snow as we can deflate the tires and then reinflate them again with the engine exhaust um, but the fact that it's only three psi makes the tires really spongy and soft okay all right fantastic so it, and you said it's the exhaust that inflates the tires that's correct there's okay. a big tube right there. Right, okay. And is what happens is when the tires are completely deflated, I throw a switch in the cab and it closes the valve on the exhaust and blows the tires back up with the exhaust. So that way there is no uh, compressor pump to burn out or something like that. It's just exhaust. Fantastic. Okay, we're going to do that later. We're going to okay. film that later as well. Okay, so... Uh, the windows obviously have to be huge so that you can see everywhere. And inside you do have, you have a, a camera here and a camera here on either side of the steering wheel. And then you have one above you so that like the ones here are your side mirrors, basically. Okay. And then you have the one up here, which is really? behind you. That's correct. And the reason being is if you're driving through the forest, so to speak, and you're going over the tops of the trees, if you had side mirrors on the outside, it'd just tear them off. Right. This way, they're all electronic, and that little bulge right there by the door. That's the camera. That's the camera. Okay. And so from the interior, I can see everything that I can normally see if I had big, huge mirrors on this. Fantastic. Okay, full coverage, we're good there. Okay. Um, the door is obviously <laughs> way up here. Okay, so we have the step that comes down, and then does this also come with a ladder extension for, for people with little legs? <laughs> <laughs> well, that is revision number two. Okay. So that is being implemented uh, on the, the next models that get Okay. Um, our simple solution is we just deflate the tires. And it That's puts perfect. That ladder right down to the ground. There we you go. Can just step up into it. There we go. Okay. That's wonderful. This is a beast. Absolutely. It's okay. It's a little muddy right now. We've had it in the lake. So. I wouldn't expect anything else. I yeah. mean, it's like it wouldn't be right without mud, right? That's correct. Now, tell me about the engine. Where is the engine? The engine, if you'll open the door, the engine is right in the center. So that right here, under center, here. That's the engine. Okay. And center mass is good from a stability and balance standpoint. Okay. So we cannot visually see the actual engine because it's completely encased. That's correct. Okay. Um, and tell us what kind of engine is in this piece. It's a Renault engine. Okay. It's a 90 horsepower, but this is geared so low that a 90 horsepower engine and a monster like this will run this at average full speed about 37 miles per hour okay and it is road legal road legal yeah that's what we like to hear yeah. <laughs> absolutely okay let's talk gas what kind of gas mileage are we getting well it's a diesel engine the gas tank is a 26 gallon tank okay now 
everybody knows that diesel trucks are everywhere on the road. They average about 12, 15 miles per gallon. Okay. This gets 40 miles per gallon. So if perk. you do, pardon me, <laughs> perk, <Yeah>. right? <laughs> Big perk. So if you do the math on something like this, at 40 miles per gallon, if you've got a full tank, you can go across a couple of states in the U.S. Wow. Without having to fuel. That is extremely impressive, it's, especially in this day and age. <laughs> yeah, it is. So if there's, you know, some kind of a, a natural catastrophe, you could get to where you needed to go. Now, let me ask you a question. Does do, do you think the diesel burns any differently when you're in the water? Does it burn quicker or anything or it's the same? Anything. It's the same regardless. Right. Okay. Now, um, I've seen this bad boy in action in the water and that's that that was really really cool. Really amazing. Um, and you do always keep the windows cracked even though like when you get in the water though, right? Because of the heat the heat that comes in? No, not necessarily. Um, we crack them for a little bit of ventilation. Okay. And that's it. But like in the middle of the winter, uh, we had this in a, a local lake here and it was iced over. And so it was cold. And so we we kept the windows closed unless we need just a little bit of A little bit of fresh air. Because okay. the heater in this will literally set you on fire. Oh yeah, it gets really toasty it in there. It's really hot, yeah. really fast. I warmed up quick in there yesterday. It was so cold outside, and I warmed up in a quick minute or two. Yeah. Got a great heater. The heater is a Wabasto heater. Okay. And the heater runs and will heat the cabin of this up even with the engine turned off. That's amazing. So. Works for me. Works for me. All right. What else, what else can you tell us about the Atlas ATV that you think that everybody should know? Uh, it's, it's the greatest vehicle that's been made. Uh, <laughs> and so when you say, what else can I tell you? Everybody needs to buy three or four. Um, uh, One for every ma family member, right? <laughs> exactly. In including the uh, smaller and younger children. They'll oh, have a, a great time with them. I can imagine my 13 year old behind the wheel of this thing. Forget about it. Watch out because. <laughs> well, and here's the beauty of something like that. He's safe because it doesn't matter what he runs into or <laughs> right? runs over. So. Perfectly safe. Perfectly safe. Okay. Um, excellent. It also has, okay, we see the lights here. There's the big bar light up top. That's a, that's a, yeah. Okay. And they go on together or you turn that on separate? You turn that on separate. That is essentially your high beam. Okay. So you've got your lights and they're LED lights and the uh, blinkers and everything on the front. And then if I turn the high beam on, it turns that light on, that light bar. With that light bar on, it looks like we've had a Nova on the sun, you know, a solar <laughs> flare. It lights up, <laughs> lights up everything for three city blocks. So it's, it's really bright. Outstanding. Uh, maintenance. How often do you have to have the Atlas maintained? Uh, it comes with a checklist of... The Atlas doesn't run on miles, it runs on hours. Okay. Similar to a boat. Okay. So at certain milestones, hour wise, then you change the oil or you check this fluid level or this fluid level or something like that. The average maintenance on it, aside from the oil change, uh, average maintenance doesn't even kick in until 200 hours. Oh, wow. And then it's just a matter of just checking some things. Right, okay. Uh, it's not like you have to drop the engine out and have it rebuild or anything like that. Right. It's just typical maintenance of a vehicle. Fantastic. I love it. They, they run. It's a very dependable engine, and uh, they've been used in Europe for years and years and years. And that's why Atlas chose the Renault to put in this thing. It's because it's reliable? they're virtually maintenance-free. That's amazing. I'd like a car that's maintenance-free, so maybe I'll get one. Uh, we'll I should get one. To, to arrange that for you. <laughs> I'm next in line. <laughs> <laughs> so we know that the heater is tremendous. What yes. about AC? AC is a refrigerator. Is it really? Uh, it really is. There was a, a point in time here where we got some a really hot day. And I was driving this, and I mean, it was just too hot. I thought, well, let's take this around the block. Yeah, it works. <laughs> so I fired up the AC, and it turned the inside of that thing into an icebox. Really? Yeah.
very, very, very efficient. Excellent. So Atlas has done a good job with efficiency on everything that they've bought and put into this thing. So. It looks like it. And you said you drive this pretty much as a daily driver every day. Well, I try to find a reason <laughs> to drive it. Let me put it like that. Uh, I love it. I love to drive it. It's it's a uh, five-speed manual transmission, just like a car. Uh, easy to drive, great, uh, surprisingly comfortable. It does yeah, have, I find it very comfortable as well. Yeah, it does have uh, captain's chairs in it. and. Uh, yeah, and it's got three steering modes too, which I failed to mention. Okay, tell us. The steering modes are, it does drive like a regular car, so the front wheels drive. I flip a lever and the rear wheels will steer also with it. That's the second mode. That way it's got a very tight radius okay. turning. The third mode, is I flip a lever again and it will actually crab sideways. And so that kind of freaks the McDonald's drive up window. <laughs> I'm <out>. sure. <laughs> yeah. When I'm a little far away, I crab it right up against the window and they kind of start backing up. So. <laughs> but it is, it's great. Okay, wonderful. Is there anything else that you can think of that we don't know about the Atlas? Uh, we don't have that kind of time. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot about this thing. It's just a wonderful machine. It's the best ATV to hit the U.S. Oh, I have no doubt. Uh, there's no question in it. Uh, everybody on 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 the planet, uh, if they were to take a demo ride in this, people will just pull out their checkbook. I believe it. And that's what we want. Yep. We want them to pull out their checkbook with a good stack of checks in it. So. Yep. But um, it's a great machine. Uh, it is a survival vehicle. It will haul 12 people comfortably in the lake, out of the lake, through the forest, anywhere. through the snow, through the mud, through the swamp. Up a mountain, down a mountain, anywhere. It's anywhere. Anywhere. You virtually cannot get it stuck. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> it's my kind of vehicle. <laughs> okay, so next we'll go in the vehicle and we'll get a full tour of the inside. Okay. Okay. All right. So Shane, explain this dashboard to me. Okay. Um, this here is an outline of the differential and the four-wheel drive of the vehicle. Okay. So if we come over here, you'll notice it's got the four wheels and then the two differential boxes. So if I come over here and I flip these switches, you'll see a little red light comes on. Yes, okay. So if I flip the other one, another red light comes on. That tells me that the differentials are locked okay. in place. So that gives me full four-wheel drive capability. So I'm now winding off. a very steep uh, embankment. Okay. Then I push both of those and lock them both in. Okay. And it tells me with red dots. Then I put this in first gear and it will climb up the side of a building. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Turn them back off, light goes on. Okay. The green is the RPM. Okay. The blue dial here is my gas. This is my RPM in a digital. This is the water temperature. This is my voltage right here. And this over here is the intake. So this is what the vehicle is sucking into the engine. Okay. Uh, here, this is my throttle up here. It's the indicator of my lights. So if I go over here, there's my blinkers. Got it. There's my blinker. And that is the light bar up on top. Okay. So if you push on the gas pedal a little bit, you'll see these will go up. Yes. Those green lights are, tells me when I really need to shift. Okay. So if you slowly push the gas pedal up, push that up, keep pushing, hold it, keep going a little more, a little more. There you go. Okay. When it turns yellow, it tells me that's time to shift into the next. Got year. it. Okay. So that's primarily the dash. Okay. What is this button here? That button is the heater. And there's two settings, high and low. Okay. 
and this button? That button is the bilge pump. So when you're out on water, you push that button and it, it turns a pump on. Okay. So that if water gets in, it takes it out. Got it. Okay. And this Next one? Next button is the lights. Okay. So the interior lights. So if you'll look up. Okay. That's the lights on and off. Okay. And then the next one is this one. This like one is alien. how I inflate the tires. Okay. And then these two are the ones that I just Got showed it. you. Okay. 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 And what is that? Right there. This is a device okay. I put in so that it gave me additional connectivity. Okay. For like phones and things like that. I also put this on. That right there. That is an instrument that I have installed in the Atlas, which tells me my uh, forward and backwards tip angle, which the Atlas has a forward and backward tip angle of 45 degrees. Okay. And then it also tells me my side to side roll angle, which the Atlas has a side to side roll angle of 42 degrees. Okay. Okay. We can set al alarms to where if our roll angle exceeds 42 degrees, the alarm will go off and say, okay, you're going to roll this thing over. Okay. And so when you think about it, a 42 degree roll angle is unbelievable. Oh, yeah. I don't want to ever get there. <laughs> <laughs> and your tip angle, same thing. Right. 45 degrees, don't want to ever get there. We have attempted some snow drifts in there yes yes we did and it was very unnerving am i correct yes it was kind of yes and what was our degree well 20 25 20 25 yeah we yes. were at 25 and it goes 45 and at 25 yeah 25 i thought we were at 45 yeah, i really did she was, uh, white knuckled and ready to <laughs> you know who do i send my will to <laughs> so, um over here this is my latitude and longitude mm -hmm. in a global map. Okay. So if we're using the Atlas for some sort of search and rescue situation, okay, we can actually use those coordinates for a satellite so that a search and rescue operation can know exactly where we are at all times. That's amazing. That's amazing right there. This, ga this gauge here tells me the air pressure in my tires. Mm -hmm. This gauge over here tells me the number of hours. This doesn't run on miles. It runs on hours. Okay. Like a boat. Okay. This is the temperature control knob for the Webasto heater. And I can turn this knob for heat. And depending on how far I turn it, it'll get hotter and hotter and hotter. Now the Webasto heater in the Atlas will run even with the engine off. So if your engine's off and you're in the middle of a snowbank, you won't freeze to death. It'll still work. Okay, excellent. This is my left mirror. Okay. And then this is your That's my right, right mirror. mirror. Okay. And then this is my rear view mirror. Okay. Excellent. What is this right here? That is the shifter for shifting uh, all-wheel steer or crab mode. All right. Down here we've got the gas pedal, the brake pedal, the clutch. Correct. Uh, yes, for you people that didn't know, this is a manual transmission shifter. Right. Okay. Now, um, from when I drove, I know that we don't start in first gear no. in this. We start in second, second gear. gear. First gear is what I call a crawler gear. Okay. It's a gear that is very, very low so that if we are going up a very steep embankment, we don't burn the clutch up. So when we started going up over the snow mound, were you in first gear then? Yes. Gotcha. With the differentials locked. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So here we have the steering wheel. Okay. And uh, what is that? Is that a lever? What is this lever right here? That is the lever that we pull to release air out of the tires. Aha, that is the def deflator. Right. 
deflator. Okay, we're good. Well, thank you very much for the full detail of this vehicle. I appreciate it. The pleasure was mine. <laughs>